I'm Marla Barnes with HydroWorld.com reporting here at the 2013 National Hydropower Association Annual Conference in Washington, D.C. Here at the conference is Mike Haynes, Director of Power Production with Seattle City Light, and I asked Mike if he'd answer a few of our questions today. He gra graciously agreed, so Mike, we'll jump into it. Glad to have you here. Thanks, Marla. It's great to be here. Great, great. Hey, Mike, you were telling me that Seattle City Light has gotten an allocations, a Krebs allocations. Uh, tell us what that is and, and what you're using the money for. Yeah, so CREBS uh, stands for Clean Renewable Energy Bonds. Um, it's a program that um, has been widely supported by the industry, and, and NHA in particular has been an advocate for that program, along with the production tax credits on the private side. For the munis, the CREBS um, gives us access to um, really low interest rate financing for hydropower improvement projects. and. We uh, applied for those several years ago and were successful in obtaining between 40 and $50 million in, in allocations that we will be uh, putting towards investments at our boundary facility, actually. Um, two major upgrades, turbine, generator replacements, and transformer replacements that will uh, put all that money to work. Excellent. Now, speaking of boundary, you also have great news about boundary. Tell us about that. Yeah, so we're excited to, to report that we've just received a 42-year license for the Boundary Project. It's a culmination of about 10 years of effort among a lot of staff at Seattle. Um, and I think if you talk to staff, I think what they would say is a lot of people just got real busy as a result of this order. Um, we're excited. We're happy about the term. We're happy that... Uh, Boundary uh, has, has kind of set the stage for uh, inventive processes with working collaboratively with the Public Utility District in Ponderay County, with all the resource agencies through settlement agreements, and a very um, collaborative and uh, developmental process that's going to create adaptive resource management opportunities, off-channel mitigation, uh, recreation, and in addition to some improvements at the plant itself. Okay. So you have a lot of work in front of you, it sounds like. So as you, as you look at that workload and you look at what your future holds for the utility, what do you all see as the, the biggest challenge that you're dealing with? Yeah, so we're, you know, we're blessed with uh, being in a good position in Seattle, but um, ironically the biggest challenge I think we're facing as I'm hearing across the industry here in Washington this week is, is finding uh, talent. You know, talent acquisition is a, is a huge issue I think with the industry, not only just hydro but probably utilities in general. And, uh, and we're looking for you know, trade positions, we're looking for engineers, we're looking for uh, managers, senior managers. So it's pretty much across the board for Seattle and so we're putting a lot of effort in that area right now and uh, hopefully we'll be successful. So it sounds like if you're watching this and you want to live in the Pacific Northwest, uh, giving Mike Haynes a call at Seattle City Light might not be a bad idea. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, um, you know, one of the things, you, you, you really are a great utility and you're committed to uh, not only producing clean, renewable uh, electricity, but also taking care of the environment and, and being a good steward. And I think you've been recognized for that in lots of different ways um, here at NHA um, over the years. And, yes. Uh, yes. But um, I, I'd like to hear from you all. What do you see as the biggest accomplishment um, that, that you speak of um, at Seattle? City Light. Sure, yeah, I think um, there's probably two. Uh, the first one and foremost, uh, just recently Seattle was recognized by J.D. Power and Associates as the number one middle-sized utility across the country among business customers. Um, it's, a, it's a milestone for Seattle. It's the first time City Light's ever been recognized by J.D. Power as the number one. Yeah. We've been working very hard in this area. Um, and we think it's a testimony to the fact that we've been very engaged with our ratepayers, especially our business customers. Um, and it's not to say we don't have a lot of work to do, but we're, we're very excited about this award and, and, uh, and the recognition it brings with it. Well, congratulations. And you said there were two, so what's the second one? <laughs> yeah, I think from a standpoint of accomplishments, something that uh, cuts across the entire enterprise with City Light is uh, last fall our city council adopted unanimously a six-year strategic plan, which lays out for us not only an investment strategy and uh, asset management <laughs> strategy, but also a strategy for our rate payers, which gives them stability and predictability for rates for those six years. So we've got a rate path established 
The council has endorsed that. They endorsed the methodologies that we put into that. A lot of hard work went into that. As you can imagine, it's not easy to predict investments that far out sometimes. And so it's put a lot of discipline into our planning processes and a lot of uh, certainty for our ratepayers going forward. Well, I'm sure that is good news yes. for the ratepayers, definitely. Well, Mike, thanks for taking time to speak with us today. We appreciate that. Thanks, Reporting live from the National Hydropower Association Conference, I'm Marla Barnes with HydroWorld.com.